Imagine living a life immersed in power and prestige, at the pinnacle of achievement, where every day begins with the latest Samsung smartphone in your palm. From the time you wake up, your world is undeniably Samsung. You wash your clothes on a Samsung washing machine and watch the morning headlines on a sleek Samsung TV. Samsung's architectural proficiency is evident in the skyscrapers that tower over the cityscape and are home to the channel that broadcasts your news. In this reality, your very existence is intrinsically linked to a company that has shaped and defined your lifestyle. However, what if this empire which was founded on decades of innovation and astute business acumen was also the cause of your most significant failure? Consider the heir to a $370 billion empire who will be imprisoned rather than crowned in a boardroom. That's the story of the Lee family, the architects of Samsung's global dominance. From humble origins to unthinkable wealth and from the halls of power to the walls of a jail, let's see how this historic family rose to prominence and then fell from grace. Introducing Lee Jae-yong, the elegant executive chairman of Samsung, who is affectionately referred to as Jay by his inner circle. He is not merely a business titan. He embodies Asian prosperity with a net worth between nine and $11 billion. That's correct. Lee's wealth is so extraordinary that it appears to be orbiting the heavens and the gilded egg in his extravagant portfolio. His ownership in Samsung was a comfortable 2% as of January, 2024. What a profitable day at the office. Let us now examine the life of this magnet from behind the scenes. While Lee does not explicitly advertise his affluence, it is undeniable that each of his entrances is a spectacle reminiscent of a Hollywood premiere. Private aircraft and limousines with windows that are so dark that they could serve as portals to another world. Furthermore, his dresses? They are so sharp that they can go through glass. That's just an average Tuesday for him. While not at work, you may observe him practicing golf or visiting equestrian stables, because why not? Additionally, it is imperative to consider his real estate empire. Lee has a talent for purchasing prime properties in the same way that we purchase groceries. In 2014, he spent $45 million on a location on Madison Avenue in New York, incorporate a few high-end addresses in London and Seoul, and you have a genuine global monopoly. However, there is more to the story. His sister, Lee Bu Jin, has a net worth of $3.7 billion. She is more than just affluent. She is a diamond-encrusted powerhouse and has advanced to the position of supreme leader at Hotel Schiller, having ascended the echelons of the Samsung Empire. Li Bu Jin's lifestyle is further accentuated by her extravagant lifestyle, which is in line with that of her sibling. She is the epitome of extravagance, rarely seen without a Bulgari watch, worth more than our houses, and possessing an art collection as diversified as Samsung's electronics division. The Li family's external appearance is characterized by extravagance, affluence, and influence, which grants them access to the most luxurious items. Let us retrace the steps of this affluent family saga, where a narrative of tremendous wealth began, to comprehend how this empire rose from humble beginnings to towering heights. The Lee family name, which was originally Yi, is a towering pillar in the rich tapestry of South Korean history. The Gongju lineage, which was established in the early days of the Common Era, is the source of this name. The clan system in Korea provides a distinctive perspective on a society that is comprised of social layers, regional alliances, and ancestral respect, in contrast to the tartan-clad warriors of Scotland and the hierarchical tribes of Japan and their samurai traditions. King Yuri conferred the name Yi on his subjects around the year 9 CE, a pivotal moment in history, from the extensive Gongju clan, which today has over 1.4 million members. Over the centuries, this name has transformed into Li, becoming one of the most prevalent surnames in Korea. Throughout Korean history, the Li family has produced a plethora of distinguished figures who have made a lasting impact in various disciplines, including politics and the arts, thereby enhancing their family's legacy. Still, the narrative of Li Byung-chul, the founder of Samsung, is a particularly ingenious addition to this distinguished lineage. 
His existence began in the southern province of Gyeongsang during the Korean Empire, not in poverty, but in considerable wealth. We can imagine Gyeongsang at the turn of the century, a region on the cusp of profound modernization, yet vibrant with the ebb and flow of traditional Korean culture. At the time, Korea was at a juncture, contending with the encroaching shadows of external influences and its deep-rooted heritage. Lee Byung-cho, the smallest of four siblings, was born in February 1910 in this historical context. He was destined to have a substantial influence on the business world. Education served as his guiding light from a tender age. He commenced his academic career at Jeongdong High School in Seoul and subsequently continued his education at Waseda University in Tokyo. However, his burgeoning entrepreneurial personality could not be contained by the structured world of academia for an extended period. Lee Byung-chol soon came to the realization that his true vocation was not in the pursuit of scholarly recognition, but in the dynamic world of business. He left Waseda University to forge his own course in the bustling arena of commerce, a decision that would significantly influence his future. Lee Byung-chol, armed with the audacity of a pioneer and enriched by a legacy that spanned centuries, began the entrepreneurial phase of his life, establishing the foundation for a remarkable career that would see him construct one of the world's largest corporate empires. Lee Byung-chol began an initiative that would revolutionize the commercial landscape of South Korea in 1938, a year that was significant for the country's economy. He established the Samsung Trading Company in Busan on the first day of March, entering a market that was both challenging and promising. South Korea was still grappling with the repercussions of Japanese occupation and the emergence of modern industry during the 1930s and 40s, which were transformative years. This period provided an optimal environment for enterprises that could connect conventional commerce with the evolving requirements of a society on the cusp of change. Lee Byung-chul's strategic decision to select a grocery transportation company was a response to the pressing requirements of a populace that was eager for change. With an initial investment of 30,000 won, which was approximately $25 at the time, in an era where such a sum was a significant financial commitment, Lee demonstrated his sharp business acumen. His strategy for expanding Samson Trading Company was nothing short of a masterclass in entrepreneurial agility and foresight. Lee transformed the company from a modest operation to a significant force in the national market in just seven years. This rapid expansion was fueled by his unwavering commitment to innovation and diversification in business practices, his exceptional ability to establish critical business relationships, and his profound comprehension of Korea's changing market. Samsung Trading Company had established itself as a prominent player in the transportation of produce throughout the nation by 1945. In 1947, Lee relocated to Seoul in search of new opportunities in the nation's capital as a result of his success. Nevertheless, the Korean War, which erupted in 1950, presented a grievous challenge to Samsung's upward trajectory and that of South Korea. The conflict, which was founded on a profound ideological divide between the capitalist South and the communist North was further exacerbated by the North's invasion, which was indicative of the global tensions of the Cold War. Lee encountered formidable obstacles upon his return to Busan as a result of the conflict, but he stumbled upon unexpected opportunities in the midst of the chaos. The influx of American soldiers, which was a component of the United States' endeavor to support South Korea against Northern aggression, introduced a new market dynamic. The Samsung Trading Company was able to cater to a unique and burgeoning market as a result of the presence of these troops. Their distinct requirements and consumption patterns, which opened new avenues. Lee Byung-chul skillfully capitalized on the opportunities presented by the evolving landscape during the Korean War, customizing his business strategies to accommodate the requirements of the new American clientele. Although the war years were a period of considerable hardship for many, they paradoxically marked a period of prosperity for Samsung Trading Company. The company's position within the Korean economy was solidified due to its critical role in meeting the heightened demand for products and services. Lee Byung-chul, with visionary fervor, redirected Samsung towards the textile sector in the wake of the war, recognizing its potential to contribute to Korea's economic resurgence. Samsung's extraordinary development phase was initiated by this strategic expansion, which transformed the company from a national contender to a global powerhouse. Under Lee's stewardship, the 1960s marked the beginning of an era of acquisitions and diversification. 
His astute business strategies resulted in the acquisition of a nylon company, an oil refinery, a department store, and numerous insurance companies. Samsung's aspiration to transform into a conglomerate with a diverse portfolio was underscored by this aggressive expansion, which was promptly realized. At that time, 1969 was a critical year for Samsung as it entered the electronics industry. Samsung's entry into its signature sector was marked by the establishment of initial electronics divisions and the subsequent production of black and white televisions. Samsung's triumph was immediate and profound as it rapidly became the world's largest producer of black and white televisions. At the same time, Samsung's other businesses commenced the production of domestic appliances, which gained recognition in Korea for their innovation and quality. Samsung's adaptability and forward thinking were exemplified during this period, which paved the way for its dominance in the global electronics market. Fresh from his studies at George Washington University, Lee Kun Hee, Lee Byung Chul's son, began actively engaging in the family business during this period of rapid expansion. He acquired the necessary skills to oversee a dynamic and prosperous organization such as Samsung under his father's supervision. By the 1980s, Lee Byung-chul was unwavering in his efforts to transform Samsung into a technological powerhouse. During his tenure, Samsung extended its operations into semiconductors, electronics, and aerospace. 1985, the company achieved a significant milestone by establishing Samsung Data Systems, which propelled it into the information technology sector. These audacious endeavors solidified Samsung's future as a global leader in technology and innovation. However, Lee Byung-chul, the visionary founder, passed away in 1987 at 77. At the time of his departure, his estimated net worth was approximately $35 million, equivalent to approximately $94 million in today's values. Even so, Lee Byung-chul's legacy is not limited to his wealth. He played a critical role in the nation's industrial and technological advancements and regenerated and developed Korea's post-war economy. His life's work with Samsung transformed business practices in Korea and established new standards for global corporate leadership. However, the Lee family would require the second generation of heirs to surpass and equal the patriarch's accomplishments, to be classified as old money truly. Following Lee Byung-chul's demise, the Samsung empire underwent a significant transformation. To diversify and specialize, the conglomerate was divided into five distinct entities. Lee Kun Hee, the son of Byung-chul, assumed leadership at Samsung Electronics, marking the commencement of a new era. His siblings assumed responsibility for the other divisions, each carving out their own distinctive path within the extensive Samsung landscape. Under Lee Kun Hee's stewardship, Samsung Electronics was on the cusp of transforming. He perceived the company as inert, which was in stark contrast to its dynamic and innovative origins. Despite its size and scope, Samsung had established a comfortable position with strategies and products that rarely deviated from established norms or challenged the status quo. Lee Kun Hee implemented a comprehensive restructuring to re-establish Samsung Electronics as a global authority. He characterized cultural inertia within Korean corporate culture as a fundamental issue that impeded innovation and discouraged dissenting opinions. To resolve this matter, Kun Hee implemented a novel management philosophy that emphasized critical thinking open dialogue and a departure from the hierarchical norms that impeded risk-taking and creativity. Kun Hee's decision to prioritize quality over quantity also represented a significant departure from industry standards. He focused on producing a limited number of refined products that surpassed international standards rather than a vast array. This strategy was not solely focused on competition. It also sought to redefine the definition of a leader in innovation and quality. Samsung Electronics expanded its global presence by establishing new manufacturing facilities in Texas and England during the late 1980s and 1990s. Investments in various technological sectors such as automotive manufacturing furthered this expansion. Due to Kun Hee's aggressive expansion strategies, Samsung Electronics revenue had increased to $87 billion by 1995, accounting for a substantial portion of South Korea's GDP. However, Samsung's trajectory is marked by both triumphs and challenges, as controversy frequently follows substantial success. Controversies in 1996, allegations of political bribery associated with the administration of President Roh Tae-woo resulted in a thorough examination of Lee Kun-hee's leadership. 
Can he face the possibility of a two-year prison sentence after being accused of engaging in illicit activities? However, this sentence was initially suspended, and can he subsequently receive political clemency from President Kim Young Sam? Lee's substantial impact on the transformation of Samsung Electronics and consequently South Korea's global technological profile was not diminished by this incident, even though it was an impediment to his professional trajectory. His vision and unwavering dedication to excellence solidified Samsung's position as a global market titan, propelling the company into a period of unparalleled innovation and growth. Samsung not only survived the Asian financial crisis, but also became a global technology leader in the decades that followed. Many Asian conglomerates were put to the test during the crisis that swept through Asia from July 1997 to December 1998. Kunhee's leadership enabled Samsung to strategically anticipate these turbulent times, fortifying its global economy position. The introduction of the Galaxy smartphone in the early 2000s was a critical milestone in Samsung's development. As a result of the rapid global recognition that this product received, Samsung was transformed into a significant participant in the smartphone market. In parallel, the company achieved another victory in 2006 by becoming the top-selling television manufacturer. This success was indicative of Samsung's increasing dominance and its capacity to adapt and innovate in response to evolving market dynamics. However, the brilliance of these accomplishments declined in 2008, when Lee Kun Hee encountered additional severe legal hurdles. He was convicted of tax evasion, a charge that resulted in a three-year prison sentence and penalties exceeding $80 million. Kun Hee was released, reflecting the intricate interplay between business, politics, and law in South Korea, similar to the past. In 2008, Kun Hee temporarily resigned from his position as chairman of Samsung Electronics as a consequence of this legal dispute. His absence from Samsung leadership was brief. He resumed his role in 2010, illustrating his unwavering dedication to the organization's expansion and innovation. Under his renewed leadership, Samsung's technological footprint continued to expand as the company explored new products such as smartwatches and tablets. But Lee Kun Hee's health deteriorated in 2014 when he suffered a heart attack, necessitating his resignation from his active leadership position. He maintained the title of chairman, but he transferred the responsibility for daily operations to his son, Lee Jae Yong, who assumed the position of de facto director. This transformation signified a new epoch in Samsung's history, which would be carried out by the third generation of the renowned Lee family. Regrettably, the Lee family would soon face additional criminal issues rather than regaining control of their legal affairs. Under Lee Jae Yong, Samsung's accomplishments have been obscured by legal complications. In 2017, the most combustible of these scandals surfaced, exposing a multifaceted, intricate web of extortion and corruption. The scandal was centered around the revelation that Lee Jae Young had bribed Park Young Hai, the former president of South Korea. One of the most shocking of the numerous illicit transactions was misappropriating company funds to acquire an $800,000 horse for Park's daughter. Lee initially served a year of his prison sentence before it was suspended. However, this reprieve was only temporary, as his sentence was subsequently reinstated in January 2021, resulting in an additional six months of incarceration before he was granted a presidential pardon. Shockingly, Lee Jae Young's legal difficulties did not conclude there. In the same year, he was convicted and fined $59,000 for the unlawful use of the sedative propofol. His defense, which cited stress relief, was unsuccessful in persuading the court to reverse its decision. Additionally, allegations were made in 2023 that implicated Lee in a $3.9 billion accounting fraud scandal that occurred in 2015. Prosecutors accused him of manipulating the stock prices of two Samsung subsidiaries to strengthen his control over the conglomerate. The outcome of this case was still pending at the time of this report, although prosecutors were pursuing a five-year prison sentence. Samsung Electronics business performance has remained robust despite these tumultuous legal challenges. The company's market share in the smartphone industry was a substantial 19.4% in the third quarter of 2023, second only to Apple. As part of its ambitious goals, Samsung plans to integrate advanced AI models into its future smartphones and devices. Despite the possibility of further incarceration, Lee Jae Young continues to lead Samsung.
The Samsung dynasty is depicted in a complex manner through the juxtaposition of personal legal challenges and business success. The company's market dominance and accomplishments are a testament to its success and innovation. And now, we would be delighted to receive your feedback in the comments. Which old money family would you like us to highlight in the future? We appreciate your continued participation in another episode of Old Money Luxury. Thank you, and until next time.